Hey there, everybody, and welcome to your show. We made it through another month, and you've made it here for another episode. And we're glad you did. This is UCAS Connection. Today is June 2nd. Summer is upon us, and for many of us, a return to business seems to be taking shape. The decision to return to the office is multidimensional, emotional, financial, logistical, and practical. For business owners, particularly those of you in the SMB space, the decision to return or continue remotely depends upon a wide variety of data and analysis. Here to help us navigate these decisions and ensure your most relevant IT needs are considered, our friend Hope Davo and special guest, Anurag Agrawal from TechIsle. Also, Christopher Schubert from CNSG will pop in to tell us about the next edition of Heavy Hitters, which just so happens to be tomorrow. Now I'm going to throw it to Nancy Seco for news and headlines, and then Hope will take it from there. So you're in great hands. I'll see you next week, but for now, I'm going to catch some of this summer sun. Nancy, over to you. Thanks, Larry. Looking good. I look forward to having what you're having. But first, TBI, featured last week on UCAS Connection, is now offering RTEC bundled solutions. The addition of RTEC services provides channel partners with dependable, OPEX friendly, all in one connectivity solutions. Business continuity, primary internet, POTS over LTE, IoT, and standalone data are all expected improvements for end users. TBI and RTEC Solutions are also committed to supporting its sales teams by delivering a simple, low-touch process and exceptional back-end support. In addition to automated backup internet, RTEC connectivity services are ideal for point-of-sale systems, surveillance, digital signage, kiosks, ATMs, utility monitoring, and mobile networks. QoS Networks was named the winner of a Bronze Stevie Award in the Most Innovative Tech Company of the Year category in the 18th Annual American Business Awards. From a crowded field of more than 3,600 nominations, QoS Networks stood out as an industry leader, primarily for its innovation in technology-backed, next-generation edge management and insights. QoS solutions include the Intelligent Network Platform, in health and in connect, all of which are driving maturity into the network, increasing uptime, faster time to resolution, auto remediation, and an overall better end user experience. Be sure to check out qosnet.com to learn more or to schedule a demo of their solution suite. And speaking of innova innovation in the SD WAN market, UCAS Beat. Our parent network is excited to announce a new program focused entirely on SD-WAN technologies, innovation, and thought leadership. The show will be hosted by Eric Brooker from Big Leaf Networks and features an all-star panel of experts, including Michael Brennan, VP and Channel Chief of QoS Networks. Joining Michael and Eric are Scott Forbush, Talaris Senior VP Global Sales, and Matthew Toth, founder and president of C3 Technology Advisors. The SD-WAN show airs Thursday, June 18th at 1 p.m. Central. Look for more updates in the coming days. And finally, while Larry is enjoying his own personal favorite pastime, our national pastime is still on hold. But fear not, sports fans, for Christopher Schubert and the team at CNSG have another round of heavy hitters coming your way. Here's Christopher with more details. Hey, UCAS Connection, it's Chris Schubert over at CNSG with a reminder about our next heavy hitters call tomorrow at high noon. I'm gonna be joined by the ultimates in UCAS. Join me as I get to interview the head honchos at 8x8, Evolve IP, Mitel, Nextiva, Vonage, and TPX. We're gonna to get to the bottom of the top strategies that are driving success in the UCAS marketplace today. And as always with heavy hitters, no PowerPoints, no boring tech discussions, 
only winning sales strategies for you. For more information, check us out at www.cnsg.com slash events for all the registration information. We hope to see you there. No pitches, no boring tech discussions, no PowerPoints. Heavy Hitters is all strategy, baby, and you do not want to miss it. Be sure to res register at cnsg.com slash event or through the CNSG LinkedIn page. And now it is my privilege and pleasure to introduce our moderator for today's featured guest segment, Hope Davo, marketing guru, sales strategist, extraordinaire, and all around incredible human being. Hope, it's all yours. Thank you, Nancy, for that generous introduction. I could not be more excited to join the show today as your guest moderator. I'm joined today by a very good friend of mine who is frequently referred to as an SMB guru. Anurag Agrawal is a well-known industry analyst who has been named as one of the top 10 analysts to follow in SMB, mid-market, and channel partner segments. Anurag specializes in developing go-to-market strategies. He writes and advises senior executives on cloud, routes to market, emerging technologies, and industry dynamics. Based on data collected from market research, he personally consults with senior executives on developing their channel and market strategies. With over 30 years in the industry, he is the founder and chief global analyst at Tech Isle. Previous to Tech Isle, Anurag headed Gartner's worldwide research operations. He began his analyst career with IDC, where he is credited for launching IDC's much sought after quarterly market share tracker research. Well, as you can see, I could go on and on, but rather than that, let's bring on the man himself, my friend, Anurag Agarwal. Anurag, welcome to the UCAS Connection. Thank you, Hope. Honored to be here. We're happy to have you. Now, we've talked prior to the show, and I wanted to break our time into two distinct segments. First, we'll discuss digital transformation within small and mid-sized businesses, and then let's mm -hmm. explore the idea of fast-forwarding digital transformation within those same types. Sound good to you? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Excellent. In your view, are channel partners ready for enabling digital transformation within their SMB customers? That's an interesting question. So if you ask the channel partners as to whether you are offering digital transformation to the SMB customers or not, almost everybody kind of says yes, right? Over 70% of them, they, they, they say that they offer digital transformation capabilities. But then when you start to dig deeper, you know, feel the onions, so to say, then very quickly you find that only 6%, only 6% of the channel partners are really offering true digital transformation capability. Most of them are offering the first stage of digital transformation, which is digitization. Essentially, which means that, hey, I will help you convert your manual processes to a digitized process. That's about it. But the digital transformation goes much, much beyond that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And 7%, I think many would be you know, astounded by that low of a, of a number, which means we, we certainly have a lot of opportunities um, to continue ahead to truly you know, have that digital transformation. In a, in a time of a pandemic and social distancing, what should be the strategy of channels to be the most relevant for SMBs? Right, I think one should look at the three stages of digital transformation and understand where each of the channel partners skill sets lie, right? Whether it is digitization or digitalization or the ultimate digital transformation. But I think if you were to look deep, uh, look very carefully, I would recommend a seven step process for channel transformation, right? One is to really build, test, and evolve some roadmaps, right? When you look about the new way of working, which revolves around cloud, security, mobility, remote work, where the channel partners can build, test, and evolve their roadmaps, right? Then they also need to, the, the second step is to work with the, uh, the customers that are receptive 
to this type of a roadmap, right, which can deliver unimaginable business outcomes when these SMBs are coming out of the the crisis in their respective country. Then the third is most important is invest in the skills needed to deploy, connect, and optimize these technologies that enable cloud security, mobility, remote work, and so on and so forth, right? And I could go on and on, but, but, but the point is if you actually start with these three, then you will be set up for success and, and not be afraid to partner with other, other channel partners. Look at your peers, look at your vendor suppliers ecosystem and um, find complementary skill sets. Does it make sense, Hope? Yeah, that does make sense. I love the way you use the yeah. roadmap, which many of us are very familiar with, um, and the three yeah. steps completely um, are, are valid and useful for sure. You mentioned security in the previous segment. What gaps yeah. are SMBs trying to fill when it comes to security? Right, so, so there are, see, what is the SMB really worried about, right? Mm -hmm. They are worried about how do I protect the data that is already within my environment? How do I protect the data that is coming into my environment? How do I protect the data that is exiting my environment? And how do I protect the data that is residing on the devices of the employees that are working in my corporate organization? So these are the four simple things that an SMB is looking at, right? Now you may call it a unified threat management, you may call it cyber security risk, or whatever it is. But the key point here is to understand is that 73% of the SMBs are unprepared, specifically in the areas of maintaining tight control over devices that employees use to access corporate information and applications, in addition to managing compliance with regulations and all that. So when you talk about the new normal, which everybody talks about, the remote work or work from anywhere, that's where the biggest gap really lies. And that's where most of the channel partners could really start. Yeah, I think we can all relate and uh, to the last, you know, three to four months, uh, and it's so, so relevant. Um, using right, right, right. Yeah, so, well, 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 sorry, sorry to interrupt you, no, but okay. I think there's one one more key point that we need to mention about this, right? Because we all know that there are so many security vendors. We all know that every vendor supplier comes at security from their own different angle. But our latest study also shows where the SMBs need immediate help. 32% of the SMBs want help with their security strategy. Mm. And 30% want help with the risk assessment capability. So the channel partners, in response to your original question, the channel partners should really focus on, say, how do I go into an SMB, conduct a thorough risk assessment, and then devise a security architecture instead of going to them with point solutions. I think this will help you in your phishing, or this will help you in spam control, or this will help you in uh, cyber uh, security, right? So I think it's time to change that and take that um, holistic view. So uh, for this part of our segment, the last question I wanted to ask, I mean, using your crystal ball, what do you believe the future channel will look like? The future channel will look like, right? Well, yes. let's, Think about it for a second, right? We know that no segment is immune to the economic shock, right? Every country, every segment of the market, right? Yeah, right. It's also important to understand that the channel forms the essential cogs of uh, the technology's ecosystem that puts the products and solutions in the hand of the customers, right? Mm -hmm, right. Then also it is important to understand that there is one channel partner for every 160 commercial businesses and 1,780 households. Now we have to keep that in mind, right? So what is happening is that in the current circumstances, when the spending is being reined in, the channel partners also have to lower their expectation. 
But in direct response to your question, what will happen to the channel partner? How would the what will the future channel partner look like? Right? It is our firm belief that the next channel will be networked with hybrid, orchestrated, and automated solutions at the core of their de delivery. Will be engaged with business decision makers within the SMBs, not the IT, will be extended through collaboration with other channel partners who are the complementary suppliers to their skill sets, which I talked about earlier, and will be transformed. Well, thank you, Anurag. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, I do have a producer in my ear reminding me that we need to make a quick announcement for our viewers who are interested in joining the show. We'll be right back. If you would like to be a featured guest on UCAS Connection, let us know. We are here to help you tell your story. Visit us at ucastbeat.com or through our UCAS Connection social media pages. You can request an interview, submit stories, updates, big wins, or anything else that's newsworthy by emailing us at featureus at ucastbeat.com. These are your stories, and this is your show. My guest today is Anurag with Tech Isle, and we're discussing the effects, values, and analytics of digital transformation within the SMB and mid sized markets. So, Anurag. COVID-19 uh, is having an impact on all of us, particularly yeah. small and mid-sized businesses. What do you think will be the impact on SMB IT spend after COVID? Right. I, yeah. So, listen, we all know that and we all talk about that. It's all over media that, you know, SMBs are the most hurt and all that sort of thing. But I, I also know, having been in this industry for over 30 years and following the market, that agility, adaptability, and resiliency will accelerate recovery for SMBs worldwide, faster than the enterprise segment, right? Right. And if history is any indication, then the SMBs are the very well placed to narrow the banks of this uncertainty, right? Yeah. We have 12 years of data, of tracking data within our organization, which paints a very fascinating picture. So if we look into that picture and pr project it out, we present like four different scenarios as to what could happen. Let me talk about the two scenarios which are most likely to happen in terms of IT spend. Okay. So ju ju just to keep a, a benchmark, at the start of the year before pandemic hit, we had projected a global growth rate of 5.6% for the SMB segment, resulting in $700 billion of IT spent, excluding the telecom services. Telecom services means the voice and the data. Right? So 5.6%. Now we are saying that the growth rate would be between 1.7% to 4%, right? So let me t talk about two scenarios. The most optimistic uh, scenario is that nothing changes, it will be $700 billion, but we know that it's not going to happen, right? So, but we call the, the scenario which may happen is the optimistic uh, scenario where spending dips in Q2 and part of Q3, but recovers in Q4 substantially. We are already seeing the recovery happening in parts of Asia, back and in Europe, right? Mm. In this in this uh, scenario, SMB IT spend growth rate will be four percent, as compared to the original forecast number of five point six percent. Pretty good, I must say, right? And the mid market, which you talked about earlier, the mid market IT segment will grow faster than the small business because they are more uh, resilient they have the capacity to invest more, they will grow by 4.4%, higher than the small businesses, which will grow at 3.1%. But the scenario, which could also happen, which may be a little bit a uh, pessimistic uh, scenario, where the discretionary spending 
actually tanks in line with the revenue decline, right? There, the SMB IT spend growth rate will be about 2.4%, which is slightly less than half of what we had projected earlier. But still, we are not saying it will go below the zero line as many of the other organizations are talking about in the enterprise sector. We don't see that scenario happening at all. Because ultimately, you know, there is a phrase which Klaus Schwab used. He's the, he's the founder of the World Economic Forum, where he says that in the new world, it is not the big fish which eat the small fish, is the fast fish that eats the slow fish. Mm. And in my view, SMBs are the fast fish as right. compared to the enterprise segment. Yeah, I, I think that's a perfect way to explain it and agree with you. Um, real quickly, because I haven't uh, asked you yet, much of your research, I mean, you obviously have done um, uh, research, like you mentioned before, over 30 years, so you were definitely in high school, I guess, when you were doing starting your business. But uh, where can you know our viewers get more information on your reports, on all the great work that you and your team have been doing? I know tomorrow you're going to be at Cisco Live, and there as an analyst, um, you know you're very highly involved in our industry and in the channel. So I want to make sure that we uh, you know give some information about where um, everyone can get more information on Tech Isle. Sure, hope. I mean the idea was not to to project my own organization here, because this is more, more than a service to to all the, the viewers there. But yes, if you want more information, you can go to uh, techisle.com, and then they can go to a tab called the Analyst Insights, where I post, uh, I write an article, a thoughtful article, a data-driven article, every Monday morning. They can sign up for the newsletter, I am there. Are, there is are, there are tons of tons of and infographics, white papers, and there are obviously reports. But there are they are under the behind the firewall, which could be purchased if anybody is interested. But you can start with uh, techisle.com. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I know that wasn't anything we talked about, but no. I think it's important no, no, no. Uh, that we share all yeah. the good work that you and SMB Tech Isle are doing. So, you know, uh, going back to our, com our conversation about digital transformation, uh, you know, we talked about it a little bit in the beginning uh, segment and, you know, the renewed industry buzz around digital transformation. What do you feel yep. is really driving that digital transformation initiatives within the SMB segment? And I think we, we kind of touched on it before, but I think coming at it a little bit different angle, um, you know, where, where do you think, yep. what's driving that transformation? So, so there are five business challenges, five business issues that are driving uh, digital transformation within the SMB segment. And you are right that there is renewed industry buzz around digital transformation all of a sudden. I mean, at the end of last year, nobody wanted to talk about it, right? But it's, it's, the, it's the reality, right? right. So, so which, are those, which are those five drivers? One is achieving cost efficiency, right? Which goes without saying, Always. right? Because people want to rein in their cost, especially now. Initiating product innovation, because at times like this, there is a tendency to drive more innovation, take more risk. So initiating product innovation, or if you're a, a service organization, it's about uh, services innovation. Then enabling operational excellence, right? That means you look at the business operation and how do I streamline that mm -hmm. business operation, right? Yep. Then fourth is driving business growth, right? Growth is still important. The growth is important now more than ever because as the economy starts to come back, SMBs want to ride that wave. So driving that business growth is important. Finally, the fifth one is em empowering organizational productivity. Now, what people forget when they talk about productivity, every vendor, supplier, channel partner talks in terms of employee productivity. 
but smbs are not l- l- looking at a single employee productivity they are looking at it looking at productivity as an organizational endeavor it has to be the entire organization which presents tremendous opportunity even for for your viewers right whether you are in ucal or you are in sd wan whether you are you know you know other types of uh, communication and collaboration solution is one of the most important thing yeah, yeah. I, it's it's interesting that you mentioned how no one wanted to use the word digital transformation because i think we were using it so often and uh, it's now more relevant and truly here and many yep. were unprepared, right? I mean, many businesses were not ready, had not made that digital transformation, especially in the SMB space, um, to have been able to you know, work remote or have those efficiencies and the productivity as an organization that you mentioned. So you know, when it comes to the SMBs, uh, to be able to weather this pandemic uh, and prepare themselves, you know, I, I like to say that we're helping today to help them to survive and then yeah. thrive in the future, right? Because ultimately yeah. they yeah. do have to, like you mentioned, coming out of this, what will that look like? So, you know, yep. any any comments that uh, you think that needs to, you know, their needs are most relevantly related to what SMBs are going to be able to, you know, secure for a future that's bright for them after this is, you know, coming out of this. Right, uh, yeah, I think what SMBs have to look inward first and say all right what percent of their business processes are actually digitized today and they would be su- surprised right only 16% of the business processes are digitized right so they have to start from there and pre pandemic most smbs were afraid to pull the trigger proverbially speaking mm. right to fast track their uh, digital transformation effort because technology choice and complexity created a decision inertia. But today, 51% of the SMBs are increasing their investments in digital. So what they have to do is to find that trusted advisor and say that trusted advisor, look at it and say which of the five pillars of digital transformation, the cost efficiency, product innovation, operational excellence, business growth, organizational empowerment, which one of them are most important to me today? Yes. And then who is that advisor, whether they can connect technology solutions with that pillar of digital transformation if you are not convinced, they need to find somebody else and find somebody till they find the one organization or a group of people who can help them process this information. And that is surely the trusted advisor. Anurag, it yep. is always a pleasure to get a chance to catch up with you. I appreciate our friendship over the years and certainly all that your organization is doing to continue to educate us on the trends today and into the future. So thank you so much. Take very good care and be safe and be well. Thank you, Hope, and uh, uh, thank you for having me. And always available for you, you know, and wish you all the best for everything. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay stay hi hi to your family. (laughs) I sure will, thank you. Thanks so much to all of the production team here at UCAS Connection for inviting me to host today's segment. I look forward to seeing everyone in a couple of weeks. And until then, stay safe, stay well, stay healthy, and see you soon. That's our show for this week. Thank you to Christopher Schubert and the team at CNSG. A big thank you to Hope Davo and her guest, Anurag Agrawal from Tech Isle. And a quick word to you, Larry Brantley. Moderation in sunscreen, but liberal doses of whatever what is in that drink. No, wait, reverse that. Oh, heck, you're on vacation. Do whatever you want. Just get back here safe and sound for another great episode of UCAS Connection. And most importantly, thank you, our viewers, for joining us, supporting us, and spreading the word. Keeping your distance, 
but always, and this is the most important part, staying connected.